Hi everyone, we are on the opening and also art talk of Choi Wang, great, great Korean artist who coming to Hong Kong first times and it's his first solo show in Hong Kong, so it's really worth to visit. We are in the Seoul Action House, uh, so step by and I hope you will enjoy the exhibition and the artist talk. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming to our festival exhibition of Mr. Che in Hong Kong. Um, tonight we have the privilege of uh, privilege to show the very first pieces of his grand series, and um, Mr. Che will guide us into his art world tonight. And let's give him a warm welcome with a round of applause. Please uh, take a seat. So I had the privilege to talk with, uh, have a chat with the, the artist, Mr. Che, earlier, and uh, it, it was very interesting to, to listen to the stories behind each piece. So, uh, Mr. Che, please, could you please um, guide us into some of your pieces? Um, we have now a video showing here, and this uh, we, we are showing his uh, creation uh, process in his studio as well as some of the exhibition scenes. So, Mr. Chase, if, if you want to start, please. I live and work in New York. I occasionally come to uh, Korea. But uh, most of my works here showing tonight are created in New York. I am an artist to try to paint, produce artwork so that anyone can view the artwork and have has a universal uh, understanding. I sincerely thank, I, I'd like to sincerely thank all um, the, Mr. Lee who uh, hosted the the exhibition in Sun Ocean, Hong Kong, and all the staff who worked so hard to make it possible tonight. And also, I want to thank all my guests who came all the way from Korea to spend this night together. I don't know whether my works will be well received in Hong Kong, as this is my first exhibition here. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm creating the artworks in the most cheerful and joyful way. And I think ordinary people can enjoy my words. Um, so if you like to know how my um, art world started, how it was born and got mature and finally got here, um, there are books there <laughs> on the wall. Uh, there are so many things happened and I had many stories to tell, but I cannot just talk about this the whole night tonight, but I should say I'm so happy, I'm just um, so happy that uh, I have my artworks here in this very new place. I don't want to bring a lot of philosophies um, about uh, when, when I explained uh, my artworks. I, I'm a simple artist, I want to entertain and please people's people's mind when they look at my art. Um, you're looking at these cheerful pieces, but you don't know what I've been through. <laughs> and uh, instead of me saying, um, explaining and telling you the stories of my life, I'd like to have some questions from you, if you have, if any then I can start from there. Oh, yes, okay, please. Okay, so there's um, an animal in the bottle in the vase here. Uh-huh. And then back there, animals in the vases. Right. So I'm wondering what the significance is of that. Yeah. He mainly uses four animals, four animals appear in his canvases. And there are foxes, hyenas, uh, wolves, cats. So these four animals uh, express 
express my heart, my ideas, my feelings. I have some positive or negative uh, thoughts or uh, discontentment, but instead of me um, portraying my feelings through people, I want to use these four animals. Um, and these animals can ask questions, they can uh, reply to the questions, they can um, just uh, give some narratives to you. So through these animals' expression, I am conveying what I'm thinking. But they kind of look like iguanas, or, or um, iguana, or reptile. So, briefly. So the four main characters are these uh, four animals, but when he wants to say something that which he cannot express with his four animals, depending on that day's mood, or what he thought about his neighbor, or what, what happened, the previous days, he just paints and draws and paints. It could be iguana, it could be reptile, it could be birds, but um, then that is, um, how should I say, um, incidental animals, <laughs> I should say. It's just that there's three of them right there. <laughs> yeah, it looks like iguana, you're right. <laughs> so, um, you know, there are some pictures, some artists uh, whose artworks force the audience, uh, some sort of um, explanation or philosophy behind their their creation. But look at my art, they speak themselves. There is no pretentious stories or um, school of philosophies behind it. And um, it's me adding up because his um, main motive is primitive. So he tried to express himself with um, just like the cave uh, period of painting, before the language invention, language was invented, the, the Neolithic people uh, be able to express their ideas, their feelings without a uh, very limited colors and tools. So, yeah, that's how it started at all at the beginning. So, uh, my artworks are very friendly, and I do not force you anything. And I do not force you to um, think about a certain uh, prototype of a background or, you know, philosophy. So, I welcome you to stand in front of my work and just feel what you see. And, um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. <laughs> he has a very active way of inviting you to enjoy <laughs> He cannot consider him very, himself very young, but uh, his offers are timeless because it does not belong to any um, schools of philosophy. Um, just like the card. Uh, drawings and paintings on the wall uh, of the cave in the Lippi era. Um, he very much wanted to express his instinct um, feelings and um, uh, ideas with very um, minimal and very natural way. So that's where we, this all started. So he, we think, and we all think that uh, his works will, as it is, doesn't belong to any school, it will stay timeless, whether it is viewed um, 100 years later or 1,000 years later. He thinks that it will be stay uh, tied in independent pieces. Um, yeah. I wonder if you describe your place as timeless in terms of your artistic work. I'm wondering about your musical taste. Oh. Do you listen to music whilst you're working? And what is your musical taste? Mm -hmm. Is it tight? Is it in the same way? No. <laughs> so um, he likes Vivaldi, Chopin, and a uh, Korean singer in the uh, 70s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, 70s, uh, and some of uh, Rahuna, Imida, and some current K pop uh, singer's song. But um, I like music in general. He likes music in general. But in my painting, um, any uh, category of uh, politics or philosophies or different schools of everything can stay together because anything can be in my canvas because I do not insist on something, I do not force um, I do not force something in my canvas. So anything can harmoniously stay together in, in my canvas. If you leave up to 150 years and look at my painting again, it will work pretty the same to you. <laughs> Well, but, um, so I think we can close our uh, uh, artist talk with Mr. Chen, unless you have any other questions. So please put some thumbs up and also subscribe if you would like to hear more of this kind of content. Thank you so much and have a nice day or evening.